You're about to watch a Trains Newswire video. If you enjoy what you see, consider watching some of our other full-length videos. Hotspots, Horseshoe Curve, Tehachapi, Chicago Racetrack, and more. Locomotive, the video companion to our best-selling special issue. And a special collection from documentary producer Rich Luckin. All these and more are available from our website, kalmbachhobbystore.com. Good morning, Trains Nation. Today is Friday, October 5th, 2018. All day until, until midnight. midnight. That, was, we're, that was pretty good. That was good. We couldn't do that again if we wanted to. No. We are we so didn't try. <laughs> I know. We're not even Did not try. try, I promise. We are going to bring you the latest, the greatest, the best stories in railroad journalism that's available this week and only on Trains Newswire. You better, you better catch it. Good morning. I'm Steve Sweeney. Good morning. I'm Jim Wren. But first, before we get to the news, we have to... Talk about the tragic error that I made in sending you <laughs> to Switzerland, Switzerland. with it our was, tour group. It was really good. And why I continue to regret this day after day after day. You know, there's this one more picture right. that kind of dri right. dribbles out. That's you, right. As you, you know, go through your edit. Stone Arch Bridge with an arrow gauge yes. mountain railroad with a yes. blue sky in the background. Yes. Or it's the... Or it's, I'll show you this one today. It's the it's a little steam rack locomotive with another one two miles away, and I got them in the same frame with yep. Lake Geneva in the background, and yep. you know it's good. It was good though. But anyway, our our trains tour of Switzerland with our partners at Special Interest Tours. Mm -hmm. um, yep. Steve was co-host along with Hannah, and uh, it looks like you guys had a great time. Yeah, all through, all, let's see, Hannah and I and 36 of our new closest friends. 36 of our best, best friends. And they're good people. There's some, there was some nice um, blog posts on the website if you want to go yep. take a look at those, and uh, I assume and some uh, video. there's some yep. video coming up, and then yep. later on there's some feature stories. So yes. it wasn't all just a complete junket, but, you know, nevertheless. It was, it was a pretty good junket. Pretty damn good junket. <laughs> like, yeah. So anyway, and yeah. by the way, we do have a 2019 tour yeah. going on that. Uh, sales are going on that. I think we've already filled 12 spaces. But That's right. There's it, still it's still on, time. It's on the website, and I can say, going on this <clears> tour, <throat> it was it was a, it was everything I wanted, and then some. Like I'm a trains guy. I'm like literally a trains died in the wool paid sponsor. But this is like unbelievable. This yeah. was the trip of a lifetime. And it, if you if you can do it, do it. It's crazy good. And you know, it's 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 you take Colorado, which we all love. Multiply by like 10. Multiply by 10. Take it over there and put electric railroads in yeah. and everything runs. And, and it's narrow gauge. Like, narrow gauge. Like, oh, it's okay, I'll, I'll just put it this way. Narrow gauge freight, yep. narrow gauge electrified freight train in a tunnel in Switzerland yep. on a beautiful day. I mean, it's like. It doesn't get any better than that. It doesn't. No. The, only, no. the one thing I regret that I didn't do, and I told you this already, there was one spot where they had a, an electric narrow gauge historic crocodile mm. and it runs twice a day and I could have gone mm. but I went to take pictures of trains instead because okay. it's just so good but next time uh, I go dear next time you send me right Jim? anyway yes next time I, <laughs> next time I make that tragic mistake again oh so oh. we better jump into this yes. week's news well, because there were some biggies this week there were some biggies well okay I'm going to take biggies I'm going to take the business side first you go on the you business side this is the week of BNSF Yes. It is the week of BNSF, mm -hmm. period. Matt Rose, executive chairman, uh, longtime executive for BNSF Railway, uh, is retiring as of April 2019. We've got a full story on Newswire from Bill Stevens. Uh, there's a lot of praise coming out for, uh, for uh, Matt, including from his predecessor, Rob Krebs, yeah. who just says, it speaks the world of them, but yeah. you can see all that on Newswire. Well, they, they, did, they did pretty well. I mean, I think they did they, leave it. They, he, he's going to leave it better than he found it. Uh, quite a bit better. Well, just, I mean, <coughs> growth. Bill, Bill talks about a lot of growth. growth alone over the past 17 a lot years. Of growth, and they attracted some guy from Omaha that had a lot of money in his back pocket. Yeah, and they yeah. Warren Buffett, and they came along and said, hey. Put, put, it, put revenue growth and traffic growth. I love that. Side by side for the past 17 years, and BNSF beats out every other railroad in the United States. They did good. They did good. I wonder what Matt's going to do now. I don't know. It's going to be interesting. And who's going to who's going to replace him? Do we? We know don't him? know yet. We don't. Know we don't yet. know. Carl Ice has been uh, CEO, and non uh, 
he's not been chairman. He's, he's on the board, but he's not, okay. not chairman. He, he's, he's the likely successor just because he's been in it so long mm -hmm. and he's been with Matt for the past five years right. as CEO. But Makes sense. it's not been announced. So right. we're, we're looking into that, seeing if we can get some confirmation. Some good folks but down there. In addition to Matt Rose's retirement, CSX and BNSF also announced this week they're going to do a direct hotshot service for intermodal trains from LA to Ohio, North Baltimore, Ohio. Um, basically, Z trains from California to Ohio. It's as simple as it sounds, but it's a game changer in a lot of ways because no one else is doing this. Yeah, and um, and it shoots on past Chicago. They they say it goes through Chicago, but it's just like an easy handoff for them. Yeah, yeah. Well, it just it keeps be. on going. Yeah. And and it gives North Baltimore something to do, you know, because that was the right the intermodal terminal that they had built. It was it was their big new strategy, mm -hmm. the hub. Hub and, spoke, for yep. Yep, Hub and Spoke for Northern Ohio, and then Hunter Harrison came through and said, nah, we don't need that thing anymore. So right. now, they've, now they've breathed some new life into it. That's right. There's, yeah. a, there's a use for there's it. There's a use for it once and, more. And right now, see, the, the, big, the big hurdle for them to try and build traffic and build support for it is getting a, a logistics base, like truck drivers who want to go to North Baltimore instead of Chicago. Right. Right. It, but you know what? I bet you Northern Ohio is a little bit cheaper to live in than Chicago. Yeah, and I would bet that the traffic's just a tad bit easier to get around in. Just a tad. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. So anyway, and then yep. and then to, t to top off BNSF, not only did they have the intermodal and the Matt Rose story, but BNSF intermodal is growing. It's just growing by leaps and bounds. Another Bill Stevens story on that this week. Mm -hmm. So cool. Hey, let's go up. Got some steam news? Yes, we got steam news. Beautiful downtown Ridgely, West Virginia. Saw smoke this week. Heard whistles this week, mm -hmm. and uh, the fo folks at uh, Western Maryland Scenic and Diversified Rail Services mm -hmm. fired up. Chesapeake and Ohio 1309 for the first time, first time, first, first time in uh, 63 years. 63, that's a 63 long time. 63 years, that's a long time. And of course, that's a restoration that's been on again, right. off again, you know, suffered from, you know, money problems, theft, you know, complications, you know, you name it. Locusts, three days of darkness. Pretty much. Yeah. And they've overcome all that and they've got it made. I was there about 10 days ago mm -hmm. and the crew was fitting up the water glasses and everything. They were really excited. We got some nice pictures for further down the road. Very nice. But uh, yeah, great to see that milestone. Uh, now they can keep going. They've got to put the wheels under it, mm -hmm. obviously do all the piping and all the million and one details that you've got to do to finish off a steam locomotive. But making progress in the fact that they got the steam test done biggie now is you know for 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 the viewers out there who are sort of wondering well where are we at okay so you put a live fire in it you mm -hmm. got it steamed up you mm -hmm. can blow a whistle mm -hmm. is that sort of like the top of the grade and now you're sort of coasting downhill well you know they've, they've still got a lot you know they've got like i said the running gear wheels mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff you know there were parts that were stolen right. that's right uh they got to replicate so you know there's a lot of a lot of stuff but you know they're they're over the halfway mark that's good news by, by far they're, they're that, that'll be it'll be very good to see that locomotive. And what we've dubbed the Beast in the East. The Beast of the East. I love that. That's good. I can't wait to see that run. It's going to be a horse. Um, gosh, you know, you know, this would have been a bigger story had not all this other stuff happened. But Canada joined the new free trade agreement with the U.S. and Mexico, and railroads are pretty happy about that. See the story on Newswire. What it means basically is that very little changes. But that's good news because there was for a time there we'd think that Canada was just going to be kicked to the curb. Mm, yeah and U.S. and Canadian railroads doing trade and all that auto traffic, all the intermodal traffic would all of a sudden be stopped at the border and taxed and tariffed and yeah. wow, bad stuff, bad stuff. Um, so you've got a couple other stories out there. What else we got? In, um, I'm, 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 I, I'm okay. tapped out here. I got one other story. I, I like to end something with, with, the, with a light heart. If you are a rail fan and you love railroad mascots, Chessie comes to mind. Mm -hmm. Uh, Phoebe Snow was memorable, but a little bit older. If you like mascots, you want to see a new one out there, you should check out a story about SEPTA. Really? Southeastern Pennsylvania Transportation Authority is looking for suggestions for a new mascot for their rail system. Uh, but they're also not just looking for a suggestion of what the mascot could be or who the mascot could be, but also its background story, you know, like why is it riding trains or how is it riding trains or how is it representing Philadelphia. Go online to Newswire, uh, follow the links, and you can register and possibly win your idea. The top or top ten people will get a SEPTA T-shirt. The grand prize winner, I guess, the top winner, will get a month-long pass to ride anywhere on SEPTA. Wow! Which I'm guessing is like a couple hundred dollars. That's a deal. Because when I when I got my pass for a week or ten days, yeah. it was like seventy bucks. That's so. pretty cool. 
That's pretty cool. Anyway, That's something cool. cool. I'd like to see yeah. it. I wish railroads did more of that. Yeah. Maybe we should walk down the hall and see if Danneman's got an idea. Yeah, yeah. We, we should do that. We, do we that. should do that. So Sounds anyway, good. all these stories and more on Trains Newswire. Read more stories uh, during the week. And on the weekends, don't forget to check out our Facebook and Twitter feeds for late-breaking stories that you may not catch until Monday. For everyone at Trains Magazine, we hope you have a great weekend. Take care.